another restoration of an old stereo. It's a Ferguson 3T10. Not sure about the era. I think it's 70s. Certainly a bit, a bit on the grubby side, isn't it? Yeah, there's some bacteria on there. <laughs> grubby this thing really is <coughs> poor little thing <laughs> that'll soon change <coughs> Ferguson Ferguson was a brand of the brand I bought a um, portable CD player when they very first came out back in the 80s. It was the very first model of portable CD and radio boombox, if you like. And it had a vertical CD player, and it was bloody awful. Didn't last long. Let's see what this mechanism movement's like. Okay. Right, it's like the open all hours till. <laughs> right, now we've had a look at it. Let's get cleaning. So here's the inside of the Ferguson. Made under license by Thorn. Actually, a thorn radio, according to that thought, Consumer Electronics Limited, London. So, it's Londonium, we've got a fuse there, that seems to be intact. We've got a copper, like a shield, there for the, the capacitor. No, it's not, it's for that. Okay, right, let's have a look at the belt because this is what the seller says isn't any good look at the crust let's see how tight this belt is shall we oh dear <laughs> slack as a yak no wonder it's not doing anything look at that letter. oops sorry he hasn't even got enough elasticity to stay on the on the motor pulley but apart from that I think I heard something rattling around in there What's this? Now that little tiny rubber band, well, what used to be a rubber band, I think goes on the front door flap. That's where it came out and made such a noise because it's plastic on plastic as opposed to being insulated with that rubber grommet. What else we got in here? We've got a spring. Not sure what that's for because the cassette door springs open easy enough, doesn't it? That fell off the back. I'm gonna have to replace that. All right, let's see if anything else falls out. Oh, I've got something, something falling out there. What have we got there? Yeah, we've got a post. This is where the screws screw into and it looks to me like it's coming from there so that needs to be what I do with things like this is I actually arrow dye them back on because this plastic is over 40 odd years old so it does become brittle 
so I shall aerodyne that back on. The posts look pretty okay. And one up there. And you had a tiny little bra a little screw which come through the battery compartment to secure that down. Right, let's take it apart and get cleaning before I start restoring. Well, you got a multitask, haven't you? Winston needed a groom badly. Look at this fur, look. Look at that. <laughs> I'm sure I could make another Winston out of that. <laughs> anyway, back to this uh, Fer Ferguson Thorn. Thoughts so far. Um, typical of these early um, creations. Uh, lots of different types of screws. I mean, literally... There are hardly any two screws the same. It looks like they've been in the parts tray. Finding all this stuff. But there we are. Here's what it is. Um, very well put together, I'm pleased to say. Good quality speaker there. Little 4 ohm speaker. It's got DL embossed in there. There we go. If any of that's any, of, uh, any good to you guys. I don't know. Happy brew, and I like the way on the front of the um, stereo, uh, mono cassette recorder radio, you have all these little screws holding on little bits of trim on the front, so it's not all just one cheap moulding, it's all parts screwed, bolted together, so you can literally take every single thing apart. Right, let's... Now I've freed up the gubbins out of this rear part of the uh, front part of the casing. I can now go and get it in the sink. Right, just having a really good look now. The internals are put to one side. We got in there, we've got a bit of matchstick in there, so it was obviously put in there for some reason or other. Now the door, the cassette door. I'll put that back there, let's see, I've put the weight, so that wants to tip forward, so I've just put the handle back here, and it sits there quite nicely. If we look at the door, look, you see those little pegs, either side, that's for those little, oh Christ, that's for those little rubber grommet pieces went, that's over there somewhere, so we've got the two, we need to find two little bands to go back on there. I'm going to actually unscrew, one, two, three, four, five six seven screws anymore no and just see what comes off the front i've got a feeling it's going to be this whole this whole face here here comes off no need for me really to do that because it's all going in the sink but you know what i'm like i want to get it to its component parts so i know that internally when i finish with this thing it's going to be good I was going to say mint then but it's never going to be mint is it look at the scratch marks and things right let's crack well, it well I've got the front bezel off finally unfortunately we have the little clips where are the little clips the little clips these little things just a flat blade screwdriver in the back just pull them down slightly and ping that out but these ones were melted melted on so you've got Melt one, two, three, four, five, five melt points. Okay, and they are one, two, three, four, five. So basically, I mean, it's so brittle. I just used my little snips and just literally scraped the melt away. It comes off quite easily. Look, as you can see. So, yeah, there's the front. And look at all that. Let's turn the light off because it's easy to see the crap that I would have missed because that would have been recessed into the body. So that can now go for a scrub a dub dub. I've got to undo these tiny little, I think they're like six mil actually bolts. 
Let's turn it around so we can have a good look at the front now. See, all this crud can now be cleaned, all that stuff in there. All that horrible stuff that could possibly make it a bit smelly. Ugh. Smelly. Look at it. Ugh. There is a little bit of mesh in that speaker. It's very fine mesh. But it's been well glued down. There's like little tiny black spots there. You can see the little black spots. That's where the adhesive is. It holds all that down. So that's good. Right, let's go and get it in the sink. And bring some life back into the old girl. Well, been in the sink. And this is looking a whole lot nicer now, isn't it? Nice and clean. Uh, I've just screwed this front panel back on. What I did, it was absolutely scratched to pieces. There wasn't really a lot I could do about it. So I got the masking tape out and I masked off. You can just about see the two different shades of silver. Masked off that, masked off that. Ch -ch 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 -ch, with a bit of Simonized wheel silver. And yeah, I think that's come out all right, don't you? It's pretty pretty nifty so yeah that's all clean clean and dandy that's all ready I need to now go back indoors with look how that's come out that was proper scabby trust me what I do when I've finished washing scrubbing cleaning degreasing all right once it's dried off in the wind out here I then use uh, silicon spray and then get me rag and then just buff it up and it brings that plastic right back to what it should be it's natural beauty I did notice um, how much fade we've got going on if you look at the color of that and then look at the color of that that is dark gray and this is sort of like an olive drab like an army vehicle color now it's where it's faded before i put this back on obviously that bit there's all, all gray dark gray it's quite a quite a thing a bit mad really but there we are it's sort of looking good isn't it so now i need to make some fixes because i was just looking at the, at the guts at the mechanics of it the electronics and i found another piece of plastic that has snapped off in there and i have absolutely no idea where it goes. I'm just going to put the transformer, the step down transformer back into that piece and then we can uh, take a look at the uh, internals. Right, I've just glued that post back on there with some arrow bitey type stuff. Ever build stick to. Right, it's the guts time. So here's that piece of plastic. That I found so it's quite intricate it actually you know it does something but it it snapped off just there which is a tiny piece so I, I don't know I need to invert all this stuff in a minute and get on the back side of it and see where that comes from okay in the meantime let's do the easy stuff let's get that belt changed I've got my box of belts just there I've just undone that little screw from there, need to undo this screw from there, remove that plate and then we can just, well, initially I would have just changed the belt, but I need to take this um, pulley flywheel off because it's got some sort of growth going on with it there. So on the other side of that is the capstan. So we'll just pull that straight out, hopefully. There should be a tiny little wash on the other side, stopping it flopping around, but we'll see. And then we can do that. Right, let's have a go as we're doing it. Let's have a look. Okay. So the front and back case is absolutely 100% ready to go. Should be a little, little blob of grease in there. There is a little blob of grease, but it's... Proper rock hard. 
be okay. I'm going to put that on its back so the spring doesn't fly off. Okay, let's take this belt off. Let's have a real good look at it. I mean, it's not, it's not perished. It's just, it, it may even be someone's been in there before and put another belt on, but it's just way too big. That's no good for nobody. Right, I can't really just turn this up on its side and have a look at the capstan underneath, see if there is a little wash on there because this is all floppy. It's all, it's two pieces. You've got the cassette and you've got the PCB, but you cannot separate them. All the wires are soldered. There are no plugs, sadly. So I'm just going to pull this capstan out of there. Oh, that's a knot. Hmm. I'm going to have to invert all of it. Right, two secs. Okay, well, here is the capstan wheel. And there is the capstan, which is actually attached to the flywheel. So if I spin the flywheel round, you can just about see that rotating and turning this wheel in turn. Now, this wheel, which drives the playback head, is driven from the inside. This, it touches the capstan through that little gap there. Now, um, I have tried to properly pull this out, but there is something, there is something in there stopping that happening. So, I'm gonna have to release this um, transfer wheel I've got to undo those three Phillips screws and then I'm not sure whether that will pop out the other side or not. Mm. I mean, it's not a deal breaker, is it? It's, it's just, I mean, look at the state of that capstan. That really needs... Come on, camera, focus. That really needs a good clean. That is filthy. All that has to come off of there, so it needs some IPA and it, isopropyl alcohol. This um, pinch wheel, that needs to be clean, that should be black. It's got all the iron off it, off some old cheap cassettes. That needs to be cleaned up, should be black. Uh, mm, right, all oh, that tape counter. That's pretty horrific, isn't it? It's normally held on by a couple of screws. I think they're on the, re the reverse. I can just whip that off of there. I'm going to be changing all these little belts as well. There's one belt from that pulley driving the cassette counter, and then that's driven from the playback wheel. Okay, yeah. Well, that's very stiff. Why is that that stiff? That shouldn't be that stiff. That's a little bit weird. Unless there's some, some kind of brake system on. Ah, there's a little brake on there, look. A little tiny brake. It's like a, a brake shoe. Uh, okay, yeah, that brake shoe's on as well. So if we press play or something, that's pause. Where's the play button? There. It lifts off the brake. Look. Okay, so now that should turn freely. But it's not because it's engaged with the transfer wheel and the flyable, and it's actually sat on the flyable. So that's why that's a bit stiff. But anyway... We know that that works now. That seems to have a little bit of a crack in it. That brake pad there. It's a new little piece of rubber. That's all it is. There's a little bit of a crack on that one too. Right, I'm going to need to do quite a bit of work on this little sausage. Oh, that's pause button. Let's stop. Let's stop. Also, want to try and get these knobs off so I can get them in the sink because they are proper. Scabadoo, aren't they? Right, lots to do. So, undo the belts, take off the tape counter, get the knobs off, try and see if I can get that flywheel out because that really needs a scrub, and then just defer all of this as if we can see it without the light on. No, we can't. But all this bonus here, bonus snottiest, is all you can sort of see it from the side. Just wants to dangle and clean, doesn't it? Okay, 
time to progress. Okay, now I've inverted this whole uh, setup. I've actually snipped the speaker cables because it was just I'm I'm wrestling with these two pieces, and this was the third wheel, so that had to be removed. Now, I have this piece of plastic that's literally knocking around, and I have that spring that was stuck on the magnet of the speaker. Now, it obviously fits over some sort of shaft or a post to do, uh, it looks like a return spring as opposed to a, a pulling spring. It's a keep things apart spring. Now, having a quick play around in here, I've got this little thing that does absolutely nothing. It seems to sit on that peg, on that push peg. So when we press that down, it does some sort of thing to that, but it doesn't return. I reckon that that little spring somehow goes on there like so and probably round that little peg there to, to force this thing back up. Yeah, I reckon it does go in that little gap and let's try and do it now while I'm looking about. Yeah, that seems to be sort of right. It's uh, got a bit of tension on there. It was quite tricky with one hand. No, you bugger. Right, can I do that? So that is on the deck there it needs to be at the bottom doesn't it who uh misses um oh i'm gonna have to work this one out there's one way this goes on and i'm pretty sure looking at this thing flopping around it there's no other thing other than that and i have found no more pieces that are flopping around in here so there is only that piece that's broken. Um, I would have thought it would have gone around. It looks like there's a piece broken off that would have go around and encapsulate that peg, but it doesn't, and there is no way that this thing does that either. Okay, <clears throat> right, let's have a play and see what's going on there. Could do with the schematic for this, really. Okay, the next day. I'm pretty much there actually. I found that where that broken piece went. I've aerodited it. <laughs> and build. It's a bit old and knackered now, but it works. Rapid epoxy syringe. My toe. That's so that's all been hoovered out, cleaned and reinstated. I've had the hoover. I use a normal hoover, sort of a shark type thing, with this attachment on it, and you get different little ends in there and I use this one because it bristles out all the old dust and fungus and and it really gets properly in there so it's had a total clean um yeah uh, reinstated everything let's just turn it over very gingerly because it's all connected via cables and wire solders and well that's that's had a bit of a clean still a bit ganky there but nothing that my wet wipes can't deal with sort of thing I might even get a little screwdriver down in there with a bit of this on it and just okay so that piece of plastic is there so it, for some reason they've left a hole in that plastic with a so you've got a tiny bit there and a tiny bit there and that is a weak point that is a you know a generic weak point and it just snapped off so i managed to get some schematics and now when we press the fast forward button it does what it's supposed to do and when we do the rewind button it does that as well so that now stays in situ 
doing what it does. Oh, basically, that spring, it pushes the spring down, compresses the spring, and that tab of the spring keeps that white arm away. So it's sort of like a gearbox, isn't it? Basically, it's changing gear. So, yes, that Aerodite has been on there now 20 hours. So I'm pretty sure that's done its thing. I'm happy with that. It's a good repair. We've got the new tension belt on there. That is really nice. Clean the flywheel. I didn't take that out because it was a huge can of worms. It really, really was. So I've cleaned all that out with the super duper wipe. That's all being reinstated. There's nothing now really stopping me. I didn't even test it, did I, at the start? Apparently the write-up said that um, it was in functioning order, apart from the cassette player, which is the norm for these machines. I've done a little bit of homework and... This is a 1980 Circa machine, so that's all good. It's a 1980, so 43 years old. So you can you can forgive pieces like that that are designed not brilliantly to just pop. What? Why there's a hole in there, and why they just didn't make it completely a plastic that would never have broken. But there we are. It's stronger now than it was originally. Right, there is the front case. As you can see, it's all looking rather jiffy. I have put, shouldn't do that, but never mind. I have put little O-rings you know, on each side. So when that door opens up, it's a nice rubbery thud as opposed to a crash. That's done, the back panel. It's all back reinstated. Um, I had to cut those wires to basically to get it all out to clean it. So I've well I soldered it in heat shrink. Uh, all those connections back together. It's looking rather suave, isn't it? <laughs> Compared to what it was. Let's put that back under there for safekeeping. I vacuumed the uh, loudspeaker because you always get like sediment settling at the bottom from years of dust and all that kind of malarkey. Okay, I've still got the patination of the where I took the screws out, how they go back in, so that's not been disturbed. These chrome brackets have really come up well. I used uh, a little bit of auto sole on a rag and I finger blasted that to within an inch. Oh shit. Now I've just gotten disturbed. My beautiful pattern now. Never mind. As you can see, this is plastic chrome. Obviously, chrome laid over the plastic. Uh, so I don't think that's come up too badly, considering what it was. The, now the knobs, they were... Absolute, this tuning knob actually took me about 25 minutes with various brushes and toothbrushes to get that as it is now still not 100 percent, but it's an awful lot better than what it was and as for these two little sausages they had like green skin goo what is that that shouldn't be there that is green skin goo that needs to go back in the uh, washing system uh, i.e. the sink. <laughs> so there we go. I mean, honestly, it, it took an absolute age to to do that. But it's the little tiny little details, isn't it, guys, that, that just make detract it from, from being an okay fix to a brilliant fix. I'm really happy with how that spray turned out. It really has lifted the front of this cabinet. There were initially... Lots of marks all over this front, and you can see that. See that sort of shininess, if you like. What I did, the, the only way I could get rid of all of those little marks was literally. And there's my little secret. I've got a little scalpel set. This is interesting, isn't it? And I use the curved blade, thus, and I literally 
I literally just very gently, come on, focus. Just very gently scraped. Scrapes too much of a, a too harsh a word, isn't it? I gingerly persuaded the the marks and the white stuff and bits and pieces to come off, and uh, there he did. So now it looks almost new, doesn't it? Yeah, that little white mark there. That is where I've actually had to scalpel off a bit of the plastic had <clears throat> been hit with something. Of course, it made a little lump there, so I just stangled it off. And again, there I had to trim down that side because it's got actually dented. So, of course, when it dents, it just moves the plastic to where it shouldn't be. I'm happy. Right, let's get this thing back together and see if it actually does anything. Well, there she is, back together. Looking good. Let's bring this over. Because the cable's long enough. Here we are. Quite stunning. So gorgeous. I wear them. But about ten steps in... There we go. A uh, cassette makes all the noises. <clears throat> the motor's running. Fast forwards. Rewind, but the spindles don't go around, so I need to check that a spring hasn't come off of those brakes to release them. But anyway, for now, I am got off and then didn't realize till really happy. We've got the little right down the back. bouncy meter there, which goes up and down with the strength of the signal. Okay. In the middle of reception class one day, but being an early years teaching assistant in a play uh, play based arena. Happy with that.